Hello everybody! In today's episode of Building a Cozy Village, we're going to build and decorate this nice looking and fully upgraded blacksmith shop. So without any further ado, let's upgrade those hammers and start building. I've already sketched out the footprint for our smithy, which is a total of 12 by 12 meters. Now we can clear out our building space. Yeah, that looks pretty good for now. And now we can do a little bit of flattening here to make it easier for us to build. There, that looks nice and flat. Let's continue. Our next step is to build a stone foundation that measures 8 by 12 meters. So we're going to start off sinking our first course into the ground like we normally do. But this time I want to flop down a temporary forge next to it to gauge our depth for a reason that you will see later. And that looks good, so now we'll continue. Yeah, that looks good. Now we're going to continue the walls up so that they are 4 meters tall. So as Gunther finished his apprenticeship with a master blacksmith in Oslo, he heard from some traders of a small village springing up around the prosperous copper mine in desperate need of a smith. He knew right away that this was his opportunity to strike out on his own and set out for Riverton to carve a future for himself and his family out of the wilderness. There, that looks pretty good so far. Now we can get rid of our sketching. Okay, our next step is going to be to do the second story, which we want the short ends to overhang by one meter and the long sides are going to be flush. So to do this, we want to add an iron beam so it extends one meter over on each corner just like that. Now we can add our some trim work around the outside. Like that. And we want our walls to be four meters tall and we're going to use some iron wood. Just like that. Now we can finish framing out our second story. And here we want these posts to be centered, so we're going to use a half meter there. Just like that. And now we want to start framing up our main roof, which we want to give a one meter overhang on each side. So we'll start with that, and we'll work our way around. Just like that. And now we'll disconnect these with 45 degree beams, but we'll use the wooden walls. And here we'll use our X piece trick. We'll snap that in there for a point. Put one there. Put one there and get rid of the X. Now the repeat on the other side. Just like that. And now we'll start on the roof. Which we'll just use the 45 degree tarwood shingles. There, now let's work on the other side. Now before we finish the main roof, we'll start framing in for our secondary roof. Which is just going to come out 4 meters from the foundation, not from the second floor, and one in the center. That's looking pretty good so far. Okay, now we'll finish framing in our addition, which is basically just a 4x12 meter box. 
to put a two meter post here and there, keeping in line with the foundation. And same on this side. But on the left side, we want to add uh, 45 degree beams and we want to give those a little support here in the center. On the other side, we're going to use 45 degree walls. It's like that. And while, I, while we're here, we'll give it a little bit of decorative trim. Like that. And we'll continue with our 45 degree roofs. He will add a couple more pieces here. This one we want to sink in about a meter so we can snap in our corner pieces like that. And we want to do a mirror image on this side. There, now we'll just fill in the rest with 45s. And we'll finish trimming this out so it looks nice. There, that looks like it shouldn't leak. Now with our roof done, we can work on our walls and floors. First, we'll start with some steps so we can get in. And I think we'll put some regular stairs over here. Don't need these anymore. Okay, so our flooring, we'll just cover the first floor. And also this room, this is going to be a bedroom later. The other side will keep open. Now we'll do our ceiling. But first we'll do our ends, our eaves here. Well, it's a lot easier from the inside. Now we'll get rid of that temporary piece there. And here so we don't forget later. And here we'll add our 45 degree walls in this spot. We'll use our X trick again. There, that looks pretty good. Now here we'll put some shutter windows and we'll leave them open. This will be our smoke ventilation so we don't need a chimney. But we'll still frame this in and make it look nice. There, now to just repeat on the other side. There. Now to finish filling in our floor. And we'll add some half walls here just to give it a finished look. And here we'll add some 45s to finish this off. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to use the attic to vent the smoke, but that could be a whole other room if you want to make something of it. That's your choice. This is your world after all. Okay, now to put our walls in, as usual I'll make them solid and then cut the windows in later. I find it a little bit easier that way. And we'll do another row of half walls at the top. And now we'll fill the center in with uh, two meter walls. I like to do it that way because it keeps those uh, little boards that stick out kind of even all the way around. We'll put a ceiling in here too. There. Okay, we're going to start with the forge, which is the heart of every blacksmith shop. So we're going to put a brick there, and a temporary one meter square block there, and there, just so we can gauge where to put our forge at. Okay, so we want to turn it so that the fiery bit is in the center. And 
that looks pretty good. So we'll get rid of our temporary blocks. Put our regular bricks back in. Just like that. Now we'll add a couple of these blocks. Alright, and since this is going to be such a tall chimney, we're going to put some iron beams in. Just for some support. So we'll start there. And now we'll put some more bricks in. Just like that. So in order to hide these beams in the center, we're going to create a snap point right about there. And add that in. Now we'll just confirm that it doesn't poke through. Which it does not. Good, now we can add these up. Now we can continue to add our stone all the way up. We'll just use the two meter bricks and we'll alternate them as we go. And up here we're just going to shift place them so there's a little bit of overhang on the outside. Just like that. We'll try and make it the same on all four sides. Yeah, that doesn't look too horrible. So here we'll take our stone stairs. And we'll add one on each side. Just so it looks nice. Okay, now to add some fire to our forge. First we're going to want to break this brick out. Now we're going to go ahead and sink a floor tile down just a little bit so it's below the brick level. So we can add some horizontal item stands. Just want to give them a little staggered look so that they don't look uniform. Go ahead and add some Sertlin trophies. And here we want to take a coal pile and sink it down a little bit. Just like that. And then we we're going to want to put our, our brick back. Now we can take our crud bow. Distress the coal pile. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Now we'll finish off the inside with our stone arches. Just want to put one on each side. Now we have a nice looking forge that is also functional. Now let's do some upgrades. Okay, one upgrade we'll put our sharpening wheel here. That way Guthner can sharpen all the pickaxes from the mine. That keeps him pretty busy. So I'll need a chair to sit in. There, that looks good. Now for the bellows. This one doesn't want to place too far away from the forge, so we'll just put it over here. That's the best place for it. Now we can do our cooling bucket, which we'll put this over here where it's handy for quenching things right out of the fire. Of course, it's going to need an anvil. There, we can put that there. Now here we'll add a little cabinet in the work surface. So we'll put our two one by one walls there. One shutter. We'll pull a chest through so it has a drawer knob. And then finish it off. Just another shutter. Take a one by one tile there. Put it even with the walls. Now here we can give ourselves a little bit of an overhang. That looks good. Go ahead and fill in the back. Now we'll put in our anvils. Looks like a good spot. And our last upgrade will be the tool rack. There. Now we have one nice looking and fully upgraded forge. And we have to put a hood on our forge. And for here we'll just snap a two meter beam there and take our 26 degree roof ridge and there, now our forge is complete.
So we'll begin inside with the kitchen downstairs. We'll start by putting a door in, snapping it to the outside, that way our gate will have somewhere to snap to. That way it's perfectly centered. And we'll start covering up this stairway. Use the 26 degree wall pieces. And there we'll put in the half wall. And we'll put in the half wall there. Along with the full wall there. Kind of give us a little breakfast nook. And we'll put a round table there. And here we'll put a Dverger lantern. along with some comfy chairs. Now we have a nice little breakfast nook. We'll probably just do a counter that runs this whole length. So on this end we're going to build a box which is going to become a refrigerator. So to make an ice brick for our ice box we're going to take item stand and just sink it into the floor a little bit because we don't want to stick it all the way up. Just like that. Then we're going to attach our frostner to it. And then we're going to take some crystal glass. First we're going to snap a piece right there. And then we can snap another one underneath it. And there, it looks like we have a chunk of ice in our ice box. Now we'll take our iron grate floor and we'll free place one there and then we'll free place another one there. And then we'll do the same thing up higher so we have a shelf to put some food items on. There, just like that. And now the next step is to put a refrigerator door on, which we'll just use a regular door. And we'll snap it there, looks good. There. Now to do the top. Now we have a step stool. This we'll just place it so it's even with the wall. Just like that. There, we have one decent looking refrigerator. Let's do the rest of the counter. After replacing those down, we'll place one shutter there and one shutter there for our cabinets. And then we'll do our trick where we pull these through and then finish those off like that. Now for the countertops, we'll do the same trick as we did before. Bring that over so that these are all even. And then we will just give these the same overhang on the front. Like that. There, same on this side. Now here things are going to be a little bit different. We're going to put a range in. So here you want to take a stone and sink it all the way down to the floor. Like that. Now here we'll take two item stands, put one there, one there for our certling trophies. And then cover the front up. like that. Then we'll add some grates on for our cooking surface. There, that's better. Just like that. They're starting to look like a cozy little kitchen. Maybe we'll give it some more cabinets up the top. So 
so put some floors down. We just want to keep the floors even. That will give us an even number of counter er, that will give us an even number of cabinets. That looks like a pretty passable little kitchen. Now we can move on to the upstairs. Okay, for the upstairs, we'll start with the bedroom on this end of the house. And we'll start by cutting in a window. There, that looks good. And it'll be a bay window. So this, we're going to take our one meter beam, turn it two clicks, put one there, put one there, and then one at the top. And we're going to mirror that on the other side. Now we're going to take one there, there, and we have to overlap this one like that. And then we'll just repeat the process. Get rid of those. Now we'll add our four pieces to fill in. And we'll fill this in with the walls, finally. And the top, we'll just free place a beam in. Yep, that looks good. And we'll finish trimming out our window. And on each of these corners, we'll put a, a two meter pole. We'll give it one click that way, and one click that way. Now we'll fill it in with windows. And there we have one quick, easy, and nice looking bay window. Even have a nice view of the ocean on sunny days. Now we'll go ahead and put our wall in. So we'll start there. Now we need a window on this wall. So we'll go ahead and cut that out there. Give this some glass too. Alright, now we just need a bedroom door. I might as well put a door in here for the kids' room. Here we want to put a cut a hole in the ceiling so we can have our hanging brazier. So we'll fill this back in. And we'll take this out, make it more centered. There, we just want a 2x2 two two meter square hole at the top. Add some support pieces. And... There we go. Trim this out. 
All right, now for the living room. I think we'll put this brazier hanging. This looks good. Same as before. Yeah, it's starting to look like a really cozy house now. Let's just give it some more windows. Here we're going to do another bay window. Same exact way as the first one. There, now we have a nice view to the harbor area. Okay, now we need a second window up here. So we'll take these wall pieces out. Only this one we're going to do just a little bit different. So maybe it's a hot day. So this window is going to be open. So we'll put our window there. Yeah, we don't need this in the center. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Now we'll take our window glass. And put them on like that. Here now Gunther can come up here and enjoy the breeze when he needs a break. And now our house is finished. All we have left to do is my favorite part, which is the decorating. Alright, let's start with the breakfast nook. First thing is I don't like how these walls turned out, so we'll just put the beams in. Yeah, that looks a little bit more open. Let's some more light out too. So for the table, we're gonna put a Lazy Susan here in the center. We want one stand for our shield. We'll stack two stands for a jar. And then we'll stack a couple more stands for different meats. Here we'll put a cup another cup there and then we'll put a big mug here. Maybe that's where Gunther sits. There's a cup, there's a cup, big mug. Now their table looks set. Makes it look a little cozier. Now we can add some stuff to our ice box. So I'll put a couple item stands at the bottom. Maybe this will be for some meats. Maybe we'll put some cold potions inside. Don't want your meats getting warm. Yeah, that fills it up pretty nice. Okay, on this side of the counter, maybe somebody's preparing a turnip stew. So we'll do the same trick as before. Right, them stand there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe up the top here we'll have a box of farm fresh eggs. Now maybe somebody's cooking a pan of blueberries. For a frying pan, we want to have a stand there for our serpent stew bowl. We want to have another one about there for our flint axe. We want to add about 
three or so stands there for blueberries. So I have blueberries. We'll add our st stew, and on this one we'll put our frying pan handle. There. Looks like somebody's making some tasty breakfast. One thing I totally forgot to do was put a backsplash in, but it's never too late to finish something. There, that looks good. Maybe over here we'll just put a little spice rack. There, that looks kind of cozy and lived in. Just needs a little bit of color. Now let's add some yellow to this build. We'll add a banner there. Maybe one over on this side. It's not looking too horrible. Maybe one more here. Just because. Now we can work on the upstairs. For the upstairs, let's add a little bit of artwork to give us a little color. So we'll start with an item stand about the center of the wall. A little bit of space between it, like that, one on each side. We can add some shields of whatever color that you like. Now we'll go ahead and build a frame. That's not too bad. We'll go ahead and add a comfy sofa. And here we'll go ahead and phase that in so it's nice and flush at the corner. Like that. Both sides. These are comfy chairs. Now we can go ahead and face the bottom of our couch in. Just like that. Alright, now our sofa needs a sofa table. So we're just going to place a 2 meter beam somewhere around there, it looks centered. Take our 1 meter and replace it. That looks good, and we'll replace this one the same way, just when it pops up. And take a one by one floor, and place it somewhere center. There, one quick and easy coffee table. Oop, that sticks out a little bit, we can do better. There, that's better. I'll just put down the pitcher and a couple of drinks. This may be somebody who's sitting up here relaxing watching the deer out the window. There. Starting to look cozy. Now let's do some banners. We need some banners up. On either side of the bay window. Maybe another one over here. This needs a reading lamp. Let's put one of those in. Maybe we'll put a hutch over here. That would look nice. So we'll put one piece there. And some temporary pieces there. I'll take these out and put shutters in. Pull the chest through. And we'll free place these so they're even with the walls. We'll do these too high.
That just needs a shelf in the middle. There, now we have a nice looking hutch. Now we can fill it up. Meads are always a good thing to put on stands, especially the glowy ones. Maybe this and we'll have some books. we need the book end. There. Journey to the center of Valheim. Around Valheim in 80 days. The good, the bad, and the giggle jerks. 50 shades of gray dwarf. And homesteading for dummies. Now for the second shelf. Yeah, we can give them a little personal chest. Right that there looks good. He has got some family heirlooms. Like his grandpa's helmet and porcupine. Maybe some nice cups. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Then we can do the bedrooms. Okay, the master bedroom, of course, will get the nice big bed. That's a good spot for it. Maybe here in front of the window we'll put down the uh, barber station. Where you can look out while you're doing your face and stuff. And over here we'll do a double dresser. This looks like a cozy spot. Now for the last bedroom. This is the kids' room, so it's going to be a small bed. And he'll probably just have a single dresser over here in the corner. Now for a little bit of decorating. I will put a jar here. Maybe Care Bear statue there. And we should probably do some rugs in the place. Here we'll put, just put a couple deer skins down. He's a kid, so they're rough on stuff. They don't get the nice rugs. Here we'll put some wall to wall shag in. Because shag carpet is the best carpet. Yeah, now it looks warm and cozy. Let's put some red carpet down here. Just because. Right here, maybe we'll make a small pedestal table. Maybe to put plants on. We'll just put a one meter post there. Followed by a one by one floor. Now we'll just add a, a flower planter. We want the knobby side facing in. And then we want to touch them like that so they overlap. Try and make the same on all four sides. Just like that. Then we'll just load it up with turnips. There, that gives a little bit more color to the room. Now we need a safety rail, since I fell down there several times. There we go. 
Not too fancy, but it works. And we'll dress the sides up. There, that's not too bad. And we need a couple wolf frogs down here. Just because. Put one there, and... Yeah, that looks good. Alright, your interior is looking pretty good. Now we can head to the outside. Alright, now to dress up the outside a little bit, we'll go ahead and add a porch light. Right about there, looks good. I had some items on the workbench, like he's working on some pickaxes from the mine. Of course, it's hot work, so he's gonna need a water pitcher and a cup. Yeah, it looks like he's being used. Go ahead and dress it up a little bit with some cobblestones. Because that always looks nice for an industrial area like this. And now just clean that up with the grass tool. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now we can add some people. Right with a 2 meter post. And we'll add our vertical item stand. Just when it clicks down like that. And then we'll place our armor stand right about there. So we can add a trophy, some clothes. And there's Gunther hard at work at the smith. Now let's do a couple more. And here we have Gunther's wife watching the blueberries. Don't want those to burn. Okay, around the side here we'll do some firewood. So we'll start with the wood stack. That looks like a good place. And chopping block. And now we have Gunther's kid chopping some firewood. And while we're working on the exterior, we can go ahead and add a little one meter overhang to our front. Our 45 degree roofs. There, just like that. It's never too late to do in something that you forget. Yeah, that looks pretty nice now. Let's move on to the landscaping. And now for the landscaping, we're just gonna do away with some unwanted vegetation and items. Just so we can put our roadway in. There, that should give us a clear shot to put our pathway down. I want to start with the pathing tool. That way I can lay it out without flattening in case I change my mind later. It's a lot easier to put just put grass back than it is to re-level things. That's pretty nice. It doesn't need much leveling either. Maybe just down here at the start. So hold shift. Flatten there. Hold shift. Yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. Put some cobblestones back, though, just because. Yeah. Now we'll put some fences down in places. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, let's put one here. All right. Needs a couple street lamps. Let's just put one in right here. Okay, for our street lamp, we're gonna start with the stone floor. And we're gonna put one next to it temporarily. Here we're gonna mark center at a four meter dark wood pole. Now we're gonna shift place one meter square block right about there. And that one will snap on centered. Get rid of those. Trim it up. And 
there we have our street light. There. And now our street lamp is permanent lighting. Now we're ready for a final walkthrough. In this episode, we built this nice and cozy blacksmith shop for Gunther and his family. We gave it a fully functional and upgraded forge that also looks nice. We built this decorative kitchen with a breakfast nook, icebox, and range. We decorated the living room with custom furniture like the sofa and hutch. And we decorated a couple of bedrooms, one for Guther's son and this one that's warm and cozy for him and his wife. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next episode, A Market for Our Villagers. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.